So today we are looking at my firewood selection that's native to me here in Northeast Ohio in the United States. And I have four different types laid out here in front of me. And I'm borrowing Remy's blanket, so he'll be with us. So this is my typical firewood selection that I currently have available. And I'm gonna start from the softest, lowest BTU firewood to something that is a little more substantial here. So on the left hand side, I wanna start with the tulip tree and tulip firewood. A lot of people would say this is junk wood and a lot of people don't even use it for firewood. Uh, it is very lightweight. It is very straight grained. It's easy to split with a basic ax. Uh, you don't need any special tools for it. It is extremely lightweight. It has a smooth bark and it catches on fire right away. Uh, it doesn't have very much as far as uh, energy BTUs goes, but it's great for the transition months, uh, maybe early fall or maybe uh, late spring or something where you just want to have a fire, but you don't want to generate a whole lot of heat. Within the tulip family, I also keep these uh, small rounds because to me that's really free firewood. And uh, again, extremely lightweight. Uh, the rounds in general burn a lot slower than any type of split firewood. The next on the list that's uh, pretty substantial is oak. And within the oak family, you have you know many different oaks, right? And I'm, I'm not an expert in, in, in firewood uh, by any means. But oak is uh, very straight grained. You can split it by hand. Uh, the bark fell off here. I use a log splitter for it. It's extremely brittle. It burns really hot and gives you a you know, decent amount of colds where tulip, you almost have no colds left. So if, if, if it's just flame and then it turns to ashes, you know, oak burns, you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit better and gives you some colds. And I would say the next up from oak would be maple. And of course, within the maple family, you have, you know, silver maples, you have red maples and, and all the different varieties. But let, let's just talk maples in, in general here. In my opinion, maple burns very, very well. Uh, has a little coarser bark, uh, very straight grained. And uh, it puts out a lot of heat, gives you great, uh, a great bed of coals if you wanna cook potatoes on it in your wood burner or, or fire, um, if you have a fire outside. And uh, really nice wood. It, it really, to me, has one of the best burning characteristics of, of any wood there is. Uh, in between here would probably be ash somewhere. I don't uh, f have a good uh, piece of ash available uh, for you to show, but uh, ash also burns very well. It will probably be in between my uh, oak and maple firewood in there. Uh, ash doesn't give you a lot of coals either. You know, it just burns and, and it just turns to ashes. Now here's a variety that many of us wouldn't even touch at all. A matter of fact, you can probably not even give this away. And this is elm. And uh, I had to cut a tree down to get one of my cabins in here. And I hate waste. So I ended up uh, cutting up this elm tree. And it's, it's easy to cut, right? With a sharp chainsaw, no problem. Uh, but I, I don't recommend trying to split this. Uh, this was split with a hydraulic lock splitter. It is very, very hard to split. It is extremely wet. It stays wet for a long period of time. And it smells pretty bad when it's wet, when you're splitting the firewood. What I use elm for is when I go hunting, like last night, it got below freezing and I needed to maintain the fire for about three hours. I take a piece of elm and just stick it on there. It, it doesn't burn well, but it burns. You know, if, if you have a good bed of colds going, for me, that's, that's what I use elm for. So rather than letting it rot in the wood, I use it specifically for long burn times and not too much heat output. The other thing I use for controlling the heat output of my wood burning stove, specifically in transition months, is uh, are these little nuggets. And here's a piece of tulip. And I, I don't throw this away. And uh, you can easily hit this with an ax and cut it into, or split it into little pieces if you just want to maintain the fire. And then uh, all these nuggets here not quite sure what this is. This is a piece of tulip it's, and you can just toss them in there. Uh, you know, there's some better wood in here. 
This could be a piece of maple. You get the idea. In order to reduce waste and to utilize all the resources, I keep all this and I, I burn through it. And it's great, you know, specifically if you only want to, you know, have, have a little bit of heat or you just want to maintain the fire for another 30 minutes before you leave the cabin or, uh, yeah, just, just for regulation. There are many other varieties available here in my woods. Uh, one of the examples is cherry. I have a lot of cherry trees. That actually burns pretty nice. It's also good for smoking. And uh, apple and pear I really don't burn. And uh, pine, I almost have no pine trees. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend burning pine in a wood burner inside, but I know some of you hey, have uh, no other options, so some of you do burn pine. You just gotta be aware of the creosote situation. Of course, any firewood you use needs to be completely dry, otherwise you are struggling. So to me, I keep it in my woodshed for about a year. Uh, it all depends on what kind of firewood you get. Uh, this stack of maple here was blown down by a storm and it was uh, fairly fresh. And uh, I cut it and split it and it's been in here for maybe two months, three months, and it's ready to burn. Actually, I burned a piece, a couple of pieces last night and it burns really nice. And then I have mixed stacks here of uh, firewood. Uh, on top there's some tulip, uh, there's some maple, uh, there's some uh, maple and tulip over that way. And this is elm. This is the horrible elm tree situation. Uh, again, but it, it burns, you know, you don't have to throw it out. Just put it on top of hot coals and it'll burn for you. My other cabin has a little bit of firewood stashed in the front here. And uh, it's very convenient to have firewood nearby. And it uh, gives you additional, you know, capacity. I had a little bit stacked over here. And uh, there's some tulip, uh, all kinds of mixes. There's some oak in there. There's some oak right here. This is oak, oak. You know, shorter pieces that I don't want to uh, stack into my woodshed. And again, nuggets. I really like these nuggets. The majority of my firewood for this cabin is stacked in this woodshed. And this is all oak. And it's been in here for probably a year and a half. I think this is two or three rows deep. I think it's two, two rows deep. A little bit of leftover here. There's some oak in here and maybe some other mixed wood. This is oak as well. No, it all seems to be oak. So for me, it's nice to have a nice diverse firewood selection to choose from, depending on the situation, specifically for a transitional period in the spring and in the fall. If you just need to build a fire and you can choose a couple of you know fast burning uh, tulip logs and then if you need a little bit more duration you can switch over to maple or oak uh, and if you just need you know something you know a little bit more warmth and you don't need really the duration i go into the nugget pile right here and burn whatever i have i prefer this it may not look as nice as having all the same firewood like the stack behind me here this is all this is all maple it looks nice but if you only have maple you only have maple right you always have a hot fire if you want it or not uh, like my other woodshed it's just oak and it looks nice and you, you think it's great but uh, I prefer my firewood diversity all right that's all I have for you today and I'll see you guys on the next one Oh! <laughs>